There are many choices in internet radio, and the staff and host of LA Talk Live would like to thank you for choosing the internet's hottest destination for the most eclectic sound and invigorating talk. This is LA Talk Live. We are more than just talk. Ah, good afternoon, and a, what a lively beginning to our show. We've got someone very special here today, but I am Frank. And I'm Ruslan, and, and welcome we, to the Cool, cool classics. classics. Here we are again. <laughs> it's great. From Los Angeles, live. LA Talk Live. Yay. And we hope today that you will tune in and listen to our amazing guest. Exotic, but modern as can be. And but this is unusual. Broadcast. Yes, we have, so unusual, we, yes. we have a lot of deviations from our we standard. We really do. Yeah. And another deviation yeah. is uh, we actually have a call in line today, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. You want to give that number? So, United States plus one, three two three, Los Angeles, four seven three, three one zero zero. Once again, three two three. Four seven three four seven three three one zero zero. Call the studio. Ask our guest all kinds of questions. And uh, you know, normally, Frank, we would start with introducing some kind of pieces that will be, you know, played in its entirety in a week on our show, and right. then we'll bring the guest. But today, the uh, guest is of such importance and of such interest that we decided, why don't we spend the whole hour with our guest? Right, right, uh, but you will be and hearing some music from oh, the country of, of origin yeah, of our yeah. guest and loving it. And, as it, it. and another thing we said from the very beginning: we are uh, staying away from politics. Oh, do we have to do that? And I guess we do. All right, we'll stay away from politics. And okay. guess what? Our guest right. today he is a consul <laughs> general of Azerbaijan, Azerbaijani Republic. His name is Nesimi Agaev. He was appointed Consul General in the United States of America by President of Azerbaijan in 2012. He's an exceedingly educated man. Uh, he holds Master's of European Law degree from Europe Institute of the Saarland University in Germany. He holds Bachelor's of Art and Master's of Arts degrees in International Relations from the Baku State University, Azerbaijan. He also wrote a book that's called Humanitarian Intervention and International Law, NATO Operation Kosovo. He speaks one, two, three, four, five, six, seven languages, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. And those are English, French, German, Russian, Spanish, Turkish, and Azerbaijani, of course. Well, we can definitely, you know, confirm Azerbaijani. I, being Russian, had a chance to speak with him in Russian language. He said that he's truly fluent in the Russian language. You will hear him speak in English today, or maybe some other languages as well. So, Consul General of Azerbaijan, Mr. Nesimi Agaev, please welcome to Cool welcome Classics. Cool classics. You, are you are Thank you very the much. first. You are the first Consul General on right. our broadcast. That's right. Not the last. Uh, I not well, not the this last. is silly hope. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is We're starting a trend here yeah, on, on LA Talk Live. It's yeah. really, really great. So, uh, did I forget anything out of your broad activities? Uh, yes. Uh, no, you know, you, you pretty much covered everything. Uh -huh. Just to add that... Um, uh, thank you very much for having me on your show. Um, We're pleased you're here. Uh, yeah, I'm pleased very delighted. Honor. And uh, our we are our consulate has been opened here ten years ago mm -hmm. uh, in the western region of the United States. And we cover California and twelve other western states. And this wow. is the only consulate General Azerbaijan has in the United States. So it's wow. pretty much interesting to be uh, here. Very, uh, very uh, important. Consul Agayev, perhaps you could tell us a little bit about your country, where it is. Uh, I have a wonderful map, and it, I, I showed it to my wife this morning. She said, ah, I see now where that beautiful place is. And I think our listeners would like to know that, know a little bit about the size of the country, a little bit of its history. Yes. Azerbaijan is located uh, in Eurasia, in the, in the Caucasus region, um, the right at the Caspian Sea, which, uh, as you know, is the largest lake in the world. Um, so Azerbaijan's uh, neighbors are Russia, uh, Georgia, Armenia, Turkey, and uh, Iran, um, and uh, it's a country of around 10 million population, 9.6 million population, uh, and the, uh, the size of the country is like comparable to the country of Austria, or in terms of the United States, the state of Maine. Right, that I was going to say <laughs> that state of Maine. That's state of Maine. Mm -hmm. So it's a modern country. It's an, as an ancient culture, ancient history. Uh, and at the same time, it's a young republic. Uh, this year, it's going to be 25 years since we restored our independence. Wow. Wow. We say restored because 
Azerbaijan had already an independent statehood in 1918 mm -hmm. uh, for two years before the Soviets came as an as uh, uninvited guests and put an end to that independence. So we became part of the Soviet Union for the following 71 years. But in 1918, we established our first statehood, and it was the first secular democracy a parliamentary democracy in the Muslim world. Okay, so I have a question. Prior to 1918, uh, the way th whenever I was researching, you know, it looks like Azerbaijan was a part of Russian Empire, right? And it is it's an oil-rich country. And in the 19th century and beginning of 20th century, Azerbaijan was producing over 50% of all the oil that was uh, produced in the world. Is that exactly right? yep. exactly okay. um, if before 1918 uh, and before the October Revolution mm -hmm. in in Russia, Azerbaijan was for about over 100 years part of the Russian Empire, mm -hmm. as other countries of the Caucasus region. Mm -hmm. um, and yes, uh, Azerbaijan was one of the main centers of the global oil production. And you're right, mm -hmm. half of the oil in the world was being produced in Azerbaijan, in Baku. Mm -hmm. uh, we had all the big names of then oil industry, like Nobel Brothers, Rothschild, Rockefellers. So the and Nobel Prize started in Azerbaijan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there actually you go. that's true. You know, uh, Adolf Nobel was never in Azerbaijan, uh, Alfred Nobel. He, he was never in Azerbaijan, but he sent two of his brothers to go to Russia, actually, to look for wood. Mm -hmm. And they said, someone told them in, I think, Petersburg that you can find a lot of wood in Azerbaijan. So they w came down to Azerbaijan to find wood, but they found more petrol ah. that they could use. <laughs> that more valuable. Wood. More <laughs> valuable. Now we have the Nobel Prize. Isn't That's it true. wonderful? And around 30% of the Nobel uh, Prize fund was made with the fortunes the Nobel brothers made in Azerbaijani. Wow. oil industry so uh, and s some of the first in the like uh, oil industry mm -hmm. uh, oil history are connected with Azerbaijan like the first oil well that was uh, dug mm -hmm. in Azerbaijan in 1848 Ooh. many think it was in Pennsylvania in 1859 that's right but 11 years mm -hmm. before that it was in Azerbaijan the first oil tankers oil pipelines etc so wow. big so oil now you're still a, a very powerful oil producing nation exactly yeah. it's, it's now uh, since um, th we restored our independence we invited foreign oil companies especially American and European oil companies to come and help us develop these oil resources with modern technology mm -hmm. because all we had was outdated Soviet technology so in 1994 we signed this uh, contract of the century it was called actually contract of the century mm -hmm with all foreign companies, uh, which has brought billions of dollars investments in our uh, economy. And today, Azerbaijan is around 75% of the region's economy. The poverty rate has decreased, has been decreased from 50% uh, in 2001 mm -hmm. to under 6% now, mm -hmm. wow. thanks to the smart management of all the, the oil and gas resources, wow. natural gas I, as well. I read an interesting fact um, uh, just this week about Azerbaijan. and. It really struck out at me. I noticed you have a 100% literacy rate. Ex exactly. We exactly. can't even, <laughs> <laughs> we don't have that <laughs> in the United States. <laughs> exactly, you know, uh, uh, education was always a high priority. Yeah. And you know, uh, of course, there are lots of things to say uh, negatively about the Soviet Union, mm -hmm. but one thing they did very right was to pay a lot of attention to education. Mm -hmm. So education level rose in Azerbaijan during the Soviet times. We had lots of universities um, and schools, etc., even the remotest villages of the country. Wow. And so we built on that a tradition when we became independent again so and uh, now during the last few years Azerbaijan has built additional two three thousand schools in the country ah, wow. okay. That's so now yes around almost hundred percent literacy level has yeah, been achieved. Yeah, yeah and how do you so uh, school is probably up to about age 17 mandatory or <laughs> 18 or something like it's that. yes from uh, uh, seven years uh, from seven till um, the uh, it's like um, S 17 years old. Okay. Around now, what 10, happens? 10, 11 years old. Uh, of now, education. what about? It won't extend it. What now. about after the school uh, term of the seven years? How are uh, students? How do students go to, to college and university yes. in Azerbaijan? We have a, a centralized admission uh, system. So once they graduate from high school, mm -hmm. they apply for that, and then they take uh, participate in this centralized test. So on one day, thousands of students. 
uh, have to they, they take t- take exams. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a kind of multiple choice exams, yeah. mm-hmm. most of the part. Mm-hmm. Uh, but for like musicians, artists, they have also kind of so-called talent exams. Mm-hmm. So they sure. have to show their talent. So and then once uh, accepted, d- g- they uh, get uh, tuition. It's free. It's so free. It's free for it's yes free. for taus- tens of thousands of Azerbaijani students. Does does the person has to be it's Azerbaijani citizen to get that free Azerbaijan education? I- exactly. Okay, Azerbaijani people, citizen, uh, we yeah. are moving to, <laughs> you to <laughs> Azerbaijan. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone who your wants population to get free will be fifty million. Welcome, welcome. That will be our contribution. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, there is a remarkable music heritage, remarkable music tradition in Azerbaijan, and uh, you know, I made a little research. Apparently, the first people appeared on the territory of Azerbaijan as. Uh, as long as 10,000 years ago and uh, many hundreds years ago a musical tradition called Mugam appeared and we have a little video here oh about dude, Azerbaijan wow. with Azerbaijani Mugam which was in 2003 you cogn- recognized by UNESCO as acknowledged uh, 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 for the authenticity, richness, and cultural significance, significance, both national and global culture, and apparently this exact mugam was that melody that you guys are going to hear uh, was included into the Voyagers, the space shuttle. Um, uh, what is it? Thirty uh, most 19, yeah, important. 1977. Yeah, right. yeah. Exactly. In 1977. That mm-hmm. space shuttle, uh, space shuttle, the Voyager that was sent outside of uh, it's outside of uh, solar system now. Uh, so it has this Mugam recorded as an example of um, humanity to whomever, you know, will catch that Voyager, exactly. I guess. <laughs> in exactly. You know, when, n- when NASA was producing mm-hmm. this identical, two identical Voyager spacecraft to send with a specific message from Earth to the, to the any in extraterrestrials that might be there, they said, let's uh, put together also something about the music of this world. And they went through thousands of songs from different cultures and Carl Sagan who led the project mm-hmm. uh, they ho- somehow came across this Azerbaijani Mugam music so they they loved it so much they decided to include it as well in 1970 right. so it was made part of this very small and exclusive collection of 27 songs and so one of them is sure this Mugam uh, piece, like three minute piece mm-hmm. from Azerbaijan. I, and I will tell you why so they chose it. It's now flying. Flying. Can, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> flying still I'll tell sending you wha- messages. Why back. they chose it? Because Mugam is the only example of folk music that has a very strong theoretical system. In fact, there is a book written by a famous Azerbaijan composer, Zir Hajibayev, uh, describing that. So the Mugams, they have that was called keys. Um, so it's you know in the standard music we have thirty keys I, with mugams. If I'm not mistaken, and someone can prove me wrong. I think there are seventeen, and each mugam has a co- it's essentially a combination of those keys and that what they call symphonic development. Uh, the performance of the mugam has both a structure and. Uh, improvisatory character and uh, sometimes Mugam if the p- true professional Mugam player uh, would start improvising can go for hours it's truly remarkable 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 art and let's guys let's watch it right now and listen for it and we will continue our conversation about the wonderful Azerbaijani culture <laughs> Thank you. 
Are we? Oh, it's still. Are we in again? Are we? In? Microsoft. Oh. Ah, great. Well, we're back after hearing that Mugam, which is really quite amazing. And as a musician, I'm listening to it and uh, trying to analyze it because if you notice, as it plays, you have a drone tone. Mm -hmm. And then you have this wonderful, wonderful, almost improvisatory That's thing. correct. Exactly. Now, tell us That's about correct. the instrument. Are there separate instruments playing the drone tone and playing the upper piece, the upper part? Um, this, uh, this piece is, is a bagpipe. It's a bagpipe. Bagpipe. All right. Now, so bagpipe, all right. uh, is, it's uh, primarily um, uh, played in the region called Nakhchivan of Azerbaijan, very mm -hmm. uh, uh, famous. And uh, by the way, it's very interesting. This recording was made in Moscow really? of, of like in 1956. Ah. Uh, so they collected different folk songs from across the Soviet Union, mm -hmm. put it in one uh, record, rec not city back then, like uh, the place, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, and then somehow, yeah, it got to into the United States and they, they picked this music from there. And now, the hope is one day the extraterrestrials will find <laughs> it and, <laughs> 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 and <laughs> make a device it. and listen to it. <laughs> they'll find it and they'll recognize <laughs> <Regular> Azerbaijani culture <laughs> as it deserves. But you know, uh, you know I think what we should w what we should bring to everybody's attention that Azerbaijani culture is not only about Mugam because Mug Mugam made its way into many other types of music, like jazz, for instance. In fact, Azerbaijani has that what they call jazz Mugam. Right, it's truly one of a kind thing, and uh, there is a there was a famous musician by Gif Mustafa Zadeh. He unfortunately died in 1979, uh, so he is kind of credited with creating uh, jazz mugam. Now, jazz mugam is based on the same model forms as the scales of mugams. However, it doesn't have that exact rhythmical or metric structure, the performer who plays jazz music is supposed to improvise essentially on the spur of the moment. So I hope that Richard, our producer, will put the ja example of jazz music performed by, by Give uh, Mustafa Zadeh right now played we on the piano, which is a, a, a European kind of style instrument. <laughs> And actually, we were talking, and, and uh, our council general, Nasimi, has a quote about this uh, piano playing, yes. uh, and, and he you would know, like to talk us about that. Bagiv Mustafa Zadeh was, of course, one of the major jazz pianists mm -hmm. of Azerbaijan, and he was called the architect of jazz in Azerbaijan. In, as you know, in the beginning, jazz was banned during Stalin ah, times in the okay. Soviet Union. All right. So Baku became one of the jazz centers of the Soviet Union where people would play underground okay, sure. and a lot yeah. of bands would be created underground again. Yeah, yeah, sure. But then of course the, the band was lifted and a lot of jazz musicians emerged and one of them was Michael Mustafa Zadeh who was extremely popular. And he, he actually also attracted attention from one of the uh, famous uh, uh, jazz musicians of the United States, uh, Willis Conover mm -hmm. in the 1960s. He had a program called Jazz Time. And when he listened to Wagaf Mustafa Zadeh, this is what he said, quote, Wagaf Mustafa Zadeh is an extraordinary pianist. It's impossible to identify his equal. He's the most lyrical pianist I have ever known. So that was a big appreciation. Wow. Uh, yeah, big appreciation. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. He, he also won several international competitions for jazz music. Uh, and his daughter, actually, 
uh, is now a very famous jazz musician in uh, in Germany. Oh. Mm-hmm. Uh, She's okay. her name is Aziza, and they call her Jaziza. Oh, <laughs> I love it, <laughs> Jaziza. Yeah. And just for every all listeners of ours, you guys will be able to hear all this music in its entirety next week at one o'clock at the Cool Classics. Okay. And by the way, we should mention again that uh, you can call in on our show. Oh yeah. Today, if you call three two three, that's in the United States, three two three four seven three three one. Zero zero. You can talk to us. You can ask questions of us or of our Consul General Nasimi, uh, and I think you'll find some interesting answers. So do call in. All right. So I have a question. So obviously, you being Consul General and with the background education that you have, uh, uh, I- I your subject of work largely is language. Why don't we talk about Azerbaijani language? A wha- and why don't we kind of you know, if you can give us a little bit of the background, where this language comes from, what kind of language it is. And the reason why I'm plucking this question is because I'm kind of trying to lead it toward Nizami mm-hmm. Ganjewi, who is a famous Azerbaijani poet of, you know, 12th century, whose poetry survived through almost a millennia now. Uh, so, Azerbaijani language, a couple what? of words about it, please. So, Azerbaijani language is a Turkic language. Mm-hmm. It's um, it's close to the langu- to the Turkish language, for example, or uh, some other uh, Tur- other Turkic languages which are spoken in Central Asia, like Kazakh, Turkmen, Uzbek, and others. Even like the Tat- Tatar language, uh-huh. Bashkurd language in Russia, so if or Crimean if Tatar language. They all have same roots. So if we go to Kazakhstan and sp- start speaking uh, Azerbaijan, uh, will they understand? They will understand partially beca- uh-huh. because uh, even in that family language uh, uh-huh. gr- uh, subgroup, actually, there are uh, other uh, d- small groups. Uh-huh. Azerbaijanis understand the Turks the best. Mm-hmm. And the Turkmen's and I also see. Tatars, uh-huh. yeah. Uh, but Kyrgyz and Kazakhs understand each other better. So it has a it's it's part of the Altaic language family, mm-hmm. which actually includes, for example, the languages uh, like Korean. Mm-hmm. Oh. So Korean or uh, Hungarian uh-huh. or Estonian and fin- Finnish. Wow, they're all in the same language family and have the same roots. Uh, so it's a uh, it's widely spoken in Azab- Azerbaijan, of course, but also in Iran, by the way. Uh-huh. In Iran, you've got uh, 30 million Azerbaijanis living in that country. Wow. Out of around 80 million population. That's a lot. 30, 30 million. million. 30 so million. More, more three Azerbaijanis zero. live in S- three Iran time, than in Azerbaijan. Three <laughs> times more Azerbaijanis. <laughs> so if Whoa, you there's a, there's it's a, a practical, very practical. Yeah. If you speak Azerbaijan, you can speak to 40, 50 million Azerbaijanis Amazing. in the world. <laughs> Plus, like, uh, <laughs> around 100 million Turks. So wow. Wow. <laughs> try to learn Azerbaijan. It's highly recommendable. How amazing. <laughs> so How in, amazing. in Azerbaijan, it's very well developed. We've got an um, institute, uh, institute learning and studying this language. And uh, it mm-hmm. and all in you know bringing new words to the language, mm-hmm. inventing new words. So it's always in evolution. Okay, so Nizami Ganjavi, the famous poet, Azerbaijani poet, philosopher, who, by the way, oh, that's a question. I when I was making res- my research, I found out that he was married three times. Yeah. <laughs> now, Frank. In one, I think either it's in Saudi Arabia or somewhere. You know, even now you can g- have four wives. How is it in Azerbaijan? Also is in it Utah. Uh, is it can we have yeah. three, four, five? <laughs> no. no, no, no. Ah, really. What would you do? Not really. Just we found the flaw, <laughs> right? We found the flaw. No. <laughs> <laughs> unlucky, unlucky. <You're laughs> no, <laughs> just just one wife, yes, because yeah, the law doesn't... Uh, Does the wife have to wear the hijab and you know all that? No, no yeah. such. Well, Azerbaijan is a secular country. So uh-huh. It's a 95% Muslim uh, mm-hmm. uh, population, but it's staunchly secular government, the religion is completely separated from the government. And mm-hmm. actually, as I said, we actually started it. In 1918, we established the first secular government, republic, s- democracy in the Muslim world. In 1919, Azerbaijan became the first country in the Muslim world to give the voting right to women. Ah, wow. In 19, even one year before the United States. Before the we, United beat, States. we beat wow. the U.S. for one year. Wow. In that, in that term. That's another fact. That <laughs> we women, <can> time <laughs> to move to Azerbaijan. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, <laughs> what can uh, uh, yeah. Love, So <laughs> women emancipation. Women. That's right. That's yeah. right. Yeah, this is great. This All right, so okay. Nizami. Nizami. What language did he write? I mean, he wrote 800 years ago, all his exactly. poems, right? Um, still very actual nowadays and very shortly we will (coughs) listen for a clip a song composed by Eric Clapton that's done on the you know poem lyrics of Nisami as a matter of fact 
So, a couple of words about, about Nizami. So, so Nizami Genjavi is one of the most famous poets uh, of Azerbaijani literature. Mm -hmm. uh, his most famous uh, works were Khamsa, uh, which is the five uh, big uh, uh, stories or poems. Mm -hmm. uh, and one of them is Leili and Majnun. Ah, uh, yeah, we, we will, will be talk talking about, about it. So, um, uh, Nizami wrote all these uh, works and he influenced the aftercoming poets significantly in the in that part of the world in uh, not only in Azerbaijan but also Iran and the mid other mi Middle Eastern mm -hmm. countries so his in, in, uh, literary influence was tremendous and even he influenced Eric Clapton now but Nizami Genjavi is very revered uh, and even you know uh, the German uh, philosopher and, and the author Johann Wolfgang Goethe mm -hmm. uh, he, uh, he mentioned uh, in his Ostivan uh, Nizami's heritage wow. uh, specifically. So um, wow, today you've got statues of Nizami in Azerbaijan, in, in Rome and in other places. So a lot of... Res I know that he's popular also in Iran, Kurdistan, Tajikistan, Afghanistan, like all, all uh, of them. Some but some what la was he writing in Azerbaijan? He he back then, the language of literature mm -hmm. uh, was Persian. Uh -huh. So he so was Farsi. writing in Farsi. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. He was writing in Farsi, but he lived in uh, in Ganja, which is a, uh, the second largest city of Azerbaijan. Mm -hmm. Actually, he never left Ganja. Really? He always stayed in Ganja, but he, from his works you can see that he possessed such a huge knowledge of like philosophy, religion, art, uh, literature. But you know, he managed that to learn all that just being in Ganja because Be Ganja was one of the main centers of science, education, mm -hmm. art back then. So wow. And where is this city, Ganja, in it's relation Ganja to Baku? It's it's l around like a five-hour, six-hour hour drive from uh, from Baku. It's in mm -hmm. north. A western part of the country. You know what, I to ask, what kind of climate do you guys have oh in yeah. Azerbaijan? Climate, uh, it's uh, diverse. Uh, Azerbaijan actually is a very small country, but with um, a very diverse geography. We have high mountains, uh -huh. um, like um, uh, 4,500 meter high. Uh, wow, peaks, 10, 15, feet. Feet, feet, right? ten, yeah, ten, ten, exactly. Yeah. Uh, Baku itself is 28 meters. Be below the sea level. Really? Wow! It's the lowest lying national capital in the world. Wow! So Baku. So uh, <laughs> uh, so Baku's temperature I would compare to that of Washington D.C. for example. So mm -hmm. mild winter mm -hmm. and hot summer. Mm -hmm. But in the mountains, of course, the, the climate is different. Out of twelve uh, climatic zones or climate zones existing in the world, Azerbaijan has got nine. Wow! So it's as diverse. <laughs> oh, in a very small. <laughs> A small country, so, so it's that we have from, from subtropical to uh, mountain temperature. And how much? How much uh, s space is it on the on the actual Caspian Sea? How many miles? Would it's it be? um, it's eight eight around eight seven eight hundred kilometers. So there's a kilometer. It's, it's yes. about thousand so miles. Beautiful so beaches yeah. there. Yeah, so yeah. Yeah. now you, uh, new resorts are being built there, so people yeah. can come and enjoy. So there's a lot of a lot of waterfront. Property. Waterfront, a lot of waterfront. <laughs> wow. Yes, yeah, that's what sometimes uh, w uh, in Baku we get uh, cold winds, which come from the north, mm -hmm. sort of the Caspian Sea, mm -hmm. or then. Warm winds then would would come from the, the south. From yeah, mm -hmm. very wow. interesting place very to go for vacation, ba Baku guys. Baku is also called the city of winds, by the way. That's it's true. It's Chicago yeah. of the Caucasus. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Why don't we listen for Ale Eric Clapton's uh, Leila. song Leila, uh, which is sung in English, actually not in Farsi, but English. the lyrics. It, it's based on the Leili and Mejnun uh, poem by Nizami Genjevi. So uh, and uh, this this. It's called Lila, uh -huh. Lila, and uh, actually, in 1993, this song got the Grammy Award. Ah, oh, for wow. Best rock song. Great, great, great. So, guys, we are going to listen for Eric Clapton, and then we'll have a little commercial break. Stay with us, and we'll, we got a lot of interesting things for you for the next half hour. Cool classics.
We know there are many choices of internet radio, and the staff and host of LA Talk Live would like to thank you for choosing the internet's hottest destination for the most eclectic sound and invigorating talk. This is LA Talk Live. We are more than just talk. Hi, this is Dr. J inviting you to join us every Tuesdays at 11 a.m. for the Happy Health Radio Show. Join us as we discuss issues affecting your health and well-being, where we listen, analyze, and talk with a heart. So don't forget to tune in to Happy Health Radio Show every Tuesdays at 11 a.m. exclusively on latalklive.com. You can also catch us on iTunes Radio R&B, Radio Flag, TuneIn Radio, Live 365, AHA Radio, TiVo Radio, and Apple TV Radio, or just watch and listen directly at latalklive.com. Reality Radio, handcrafted for your listening and viewing pleasure. This is LA Talk Live. We are more than just talk. Welcome, this is Greg, inviting you to tune in Saturday, 6 p.m. to the Mystic Ballroom. All vinyl most of the time, and we'll cover psychedelic soul garage and much much more myself and the young mogul will bring you this every saturday at 6 p.m exclusively on latalklive.com you can also catch us on itunes radio r&b live 365 radio flag tune in radio aha radio tv radio and apple tv radio or you can watch listen directly at latalklive.com Reality radio handcrafted for yours and mine listening and viewing pleasure. This is LA Talk Live, and we are more than just talk. Good afternoon. Here we're back again on the Cool Classics. Yeah. And, uh this and I know who you are. And I know who you are. Ah, you're Ruslan. <laughs> and you're Frank. Are you Frank? I'm Frank. Always. Always <laughs> Frank. And you know, on this show, we have the wonderful Consul General of Azerbaijan here in Los Angeles, Nassimi Agayev. And we can talk live. So please call us at 323-473-3100 on LA Talk Live. All right. Well, guys, we are listening right now for Fikret Amirov. He's an Azerbaijani composer. It's called Sweet on Azerbaijan Folk Tunes. And this is the third movement. You will hear it in, in its entirety next, next week. week yeah. Yep. As well as uh, a few other pieces. And back to our guest. Why don't you talk a little more about the diversity of the... So I read that Azerbaijan is a predominantly Muslim country, right? And Shiites. M- Muslim Shiites. Shiites. Yes. Shiites. Okay. And there are Sunnis as well. Exactly. And we said that we are going to stay away from politics. But with everything that's going on in the world, can you please explain us what's the difference between <laughs> Shiites yes, and yes, Sunnis? Yes, and <laughs> who is dominating the world now? And <laughs> Actually, it's, it's less about the um, domination and, and the difference. Actually, and the example of Azerbaijan shows that there isn't much difference. We are all human beings and we can live together peacefully, in harmony, respect each other. So it's possible. So Azerbaijan, as you said, uh, is a, a multicultural country and a multi-religious country. Um, the country is sometimes called land of flames, well, mm-hmm. land of fire. And the roots of that uh, is that we had the Zoroastrian religion, actually, was oh, wow. uh, oh, really? uh, came about in the, on the ter- historic territory of Azerbaijan. Uh, in close to Baku, you've got a fire temple that was yes. built by Indian Parsi, wow. who still make pilgrimages from India, like the southern India, to wow. that place. So it's, um, uh, that's why it's called Land of uh, mm-hmm. Flames, Land of Fire. But at the same time, Azerbaijan is one of the ancient uh, uh, nations where Christianity was adopted as a state religion. Wow. It happened in Azerbaijan in 313 AD that the, uh, uh, Christianity was adapted as a state wow. religion of this country. And uh, also, you know, we've got, of course, now large Christian minority, around half a million Christians, Orthodox Russians, uh, Belarusians, Ukrainians. We've got Georgian uh, Christian community. We've got Lutherans, pro- evangelicals, wow. of course, Catholic Church. So large uh, Christian community. At the same time, we have a large Jewish community of about 30,000 people mm-hmm. who have lived in this country for about 2,000 years. 
wow. without ever facing pogroms, discrimination, and often uh, great m- m- Jewish uh, leaders call Azerbaijan a land of no anti-Semitism. Wow. Uh, now we know, Frank, where the Jewish people escaped from, from Egypt. They went to they Azerbaijan. Went to Azerbaijan. <laughs> yeah, yes. that's very possible. <laughs> exactly. Know? And now that's why it's, it's a, a model, a successful mm-hmm. model of peaceful coexistence which I think we hope, we hope that can be replicated in other places of the mm-hmm. world where there are so many problems. And it's not only just about <coughs> a religious harmony between different, dif- different mm-hmm. religious communities in Azerbaijan. It's also about the harmony within Islam itself, which is of a great importance. Mm-hmm. In Azerbaijan, which is a majority Shiite population, mm-hmm. you've got like uh, 75% Shiites and the rest are Sunnis. Mm-hmm there are no problems between the two denominations of Islam. So Shiites and Sunnis have coexisted peacefully for centuries. And as government, we try to foster those traditions. Mm -hmm. Like a couple of months ago, we launched at our largest mosque uh, the unity prayer, uh, which will happen every Friday, Mm -hmm. uh, or actually has been happening already every Friday, where Sunnis and Shiites come together and pray together. Wow. And the imams take take turns. So it's a also a message to all those places where are, there are confrontations, divisions, sectar- sectarianism, that it's absurd. We can live together. We can love each other. The the fighting is not needed. Why don't we listen right now for another example of Azerbaijani mugam that's recorded by an ensemble called Land of Flames, and this mugam is called Sun of the Sky Rhythmic Mugam, and that's a true original mugam. And please, guys, listen how the singer sings. You will hear this remarkable, incredible trills that the singer does uh, through really wide intervals, which is appropriate only for Azerbaijani Mugam. I don't know any other example of such. No, type and, of I, and I yeah. actually had was practicing part of the style <laughs> on my own voice. <laughs> it takes a lot of I liked it. It takes You'll a lot it. of practice <laughs> to more. get these like things it. done. <laughs> so please. Can you believe that voice? It's an incredible sound, an incredible technical feat to be singing in that style with those trills and the voice going between two different things and still keeping it in tune like that with the background. It's really virtuosic. Really How do we call it, Frank? Is this bel canto? No, it's Az- Azerbaijani <laughs> canto. canto. <laughs> <laughs> it's Baku canto. Baku canto. <laughs> Baku canto. <laughs> So we have a few more examples of Azerbaijani singer singing, and those are not folk uh, sort of ba- background mm-hmm. singers. They're professionally mm-hmm. trained right, singers right. Uh, from the beginning of 20th century up to the contemporary days. And we thought it might be interesting to uh, play it for you guys just to show how it evolved within just a span of the century. And um, 
Uh, Mr. Consul, maybe you could tell us a couple of words about the uh, uh, first operetta that was composed right in the Muslim world. Exactly. Uh, called Arshin Malalan, the cloth peddler. Exactly. So um. the uh, the greatest, one of the greatest composers Azerbaijan has is Uzair Hajibayev or Azib Hajibayli. So Uzair Hajibayli actually he became the author of the first opera, which was uh, Leila Majnun. Mm -hmm based on uh, uh, so the same story. First opera uh, in Muslim world? First or opera in the Muslim, in Muslim world, world, also first operetta in the Muslim world. Aha, wow. Right. So uh, 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 the opera was Leila Majnun and the operetta was Klaus Pedler. Question. Yeah. I know that in some Muslim countries, particularly in the beginning of the 20th century, women were not allowed on the stage. Yes. Was exactly. that the case in Azerbaijan as well? Exactly, exactly. That's why uh, when they had the first staging of this operetta, uh -huh. so uh, men, <laughs> would have to play the woman, female roles. Wow. So, but most of the men back then had mustache. Uh oh. <laughs> so, and they had to then shave their mustache, shave over their mustache, and because oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or some of them were not able to do it, they didn't want to do it, so they hid the mustache under a whale. Wow. But you know that was a big sacrifice from those actors uh -huh. and be for the sake of art. And it music. is, but you know, in a sense, it sounds somewhat conservative because women were not allowed on the stage, and yet putting it in modern parliaments, <laughs> it was pretty <laughs> advanced <laughs> because they were dressing as exactly. women. By the same token, they were allowed to vote. <laughs> They didn't have to exactly. wear hijab. This in the was in, yeah. in 1913. It's so interesting. Oh, so that was before, before the, the 1913. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. The, f the first opera that was staged, yeah. and yes, five, uh, no, oh, six years later, as a Virginian and woman got the voting rights. So, and it all changed. Then the woman went to the stage. We had the actually first female woman singer uh -huh. on stage in the Muslim world as well. Was so the concert sold out? So Do you know that? Sold out. Pe people, <laughs> out people would hang on the walls to, to watch it. So sometimes the, the, art, <laughs> the art can be the predecessor exactly. of the actual change, the it progressive bring change. Bringing change, you change you never the country. Know. Yeah. And in this uh, operetta, Klaus Pedler became so famous in the region that they would take out it uh, outside of Azerbaijan. Mm. And uh, then they made a movie of this based on this operetta in 1945, which became a hit in the Soviet kinema cinematography. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. It was translated into around like 80 languages wow. and was shown in 130 countries. Wow. Wow. In, in, uh, in China alone, it was uh, the, the operetta, Klaus mm -hmm. Pedler, was staged 300 times. Really? Wow. Now so is, is the and we brought it to Los Angeles uh, yes. three years ago. Yeah, year uh -huh. 2013. The, uh, 2013 yeah. to the Music Center, Dorothy Chandler Pavilion. Mm -hmm. uh, and there it was performed to a crowd of 3,000 people Amazing. by Americans. So Americans would sing in Azerbaijani language. Wow. And all the dialogues, of course, were English. So it was a nice mixture. Yeah. It was a very successful performance. Is it still performed a lot in Azerbaijan? A lot, a lot yes. A Every lot, season yeah. our uh, um, uh, opera theater yeah. performs it, of course. Yeah. It's a very beloved song. Yeah. So why don't we listen right now for an aria from this um, uh, uh, opera uh, performed by Rashid Beybudov. He was a tenor of the beginning of 20th century. You guys will hear the difference between the folk singing and that what Azerbaijan and professional singers can do.
Frank, what do you think? I well, I love it. I, I really love. It. I love the sound of his voice, and the, the music is really very beautiful. And the language sounds very melodic, isn't it? it almost like Italian. It seems language. like the language you know works very, very well with the music. So, so maybe you can tell us but what the song is yeah, about. Yeah, maybe you can tell, tell us what the, the, song. the song is about love. So this this young man wants to get married, and actually wants um, to marry the person he has chosen. But now there are obstacles for that. So now he declares that I have troubles, etc. So that's how he explains his suffering. Okay. And he can marry only one woman now. You know that that's a problem. So that's the, the story evolves. The story of Klaus Pedler or Arshin Malalan evolves in Azerbaijan's Karabakh region, which is an, which is an ancient region and which has produced so many poets, poem, uh, by the the writers and composers. Uzair Hajibayev himself is from Karabakh region, mm. from the sh city of Shusha in that mm -hmm. region. Mm -hmm. Historical capital. So there, this young man, young merchant, wants to marry uh, by his own choice. You know, mm -hmm. back then, hundred years ago, there were lots of arranged marriages. Mm -hmm. But he says, "I'm going to see first whom I'm going to marry and love her, and then marry." But that's a bit challenging. So what he does, he disguises as a as a cloth peddler and goes in different houses. Because only clothes peddlers were can get into the can house, into house. Yeah. see the yeah. woman, and, and yeah. and see that's the woman because they can't. Great way to find the the, the yeah. woman, the future wife. Right, right. So uh, that's uh, the whole story. Who uh, now? I have a question. In the household, who picks out the the cloth peddler? The 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 the, the, the father or the, the, the father uh, the, or the women pick out the only cloth. woman. The woman, woman. So, so that's how he gets close So then he he was able to choose the 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 future wife, and of course there was a mutual love. So that's. In general, this whole operette is very simple, but it's a strong back then, strong message, message. against outdated traditions. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. as you are com absolutely right, so art can be predecessor that for big for changes change. to come. Yeah, wow. Yeah, yeah. Why not we move a little further to the second half of 20th century? We will listen for a wonderful singer, Muslim Magamayev, who is an Azerbaijani singer. And now you guys will hear a truly European style of singing. Um, and you'll hear this involvement right, from the folk singing Granada, to the a, Granada, a, a, a Hispanic yeah. song, Mexican Hispanic song, song. Yeah. in yeah. Spanish. He's doing it in Spanish. Yeah. Yeah. Frank, what do you oh, think I about love it. it. I love yeah. his singing, Granada, and he he holds that lo that one long note before the actual song being longer than any tenor I've ever heard. <laughs> no, no, yeah. He's, he's <laughs> good trait, a good trait <laughs> for a tenor. He was called actually the uh, Soviet Sinatra. 
So, exactly. He was so yeah. popular well, in the Soviet, Soviet yeah. Union. Yeah. 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 Soviet it's Sinatra. It's a good yeah. voice. Yeah. Yeah. Sold out concerts, yeah. truly. King, King of songs. That's right. Really Studied cool. in Italy, I think. La Scala, La Scala performed yeah. the visiting yeah. yeah. arts. Yeah. 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 Very good. His, his grandfather was one of the founders of Azerbaijani opera. Ah, okay. His name was also Muslim Magomayev. Now you have a, a national opera company in Azerbaijan. Exactly. Yeah. We have a, a huge opera and ballet theater, and they have a big day. They have all kinds of plays, operas, ballets. The very, very big cultural scene. Exactly. Remarkable. That's great. Remarkable. Great. Shall we move to 21st Let's century move. now? Yeah. All right. So here is the piece composed by Frangis Aliza De. She is still alive. Well, yes. she's very much alive. She's not still alive. She's very much mm -hmm. alive. And she's an Azerbaijani composer. She's a woman. Yes. And uh, uh, Kronos Quartet, the famous Kronos Quartet from the United States, actually uh, commissioned her to compose a number of pieces, and they released a CD with her uh, music. She's remarkably known worldwide, guys, and this is a truly sophisticated music that's very much based on the Azerbaijani folk music as well. So we are going to hear right now, that was called Ash Absharon Quintet, and uh, she calls this movement tactile <laughs> time. It's a Kronos quartet plus one instrument. It's actually a quintet. And uh, please listen for it. You will hear what Azerbaijani musicians are doing now, nowadays. This is an amazing piece of music. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, look, it sounds like folk it instruments, right? Like but it's folk. performed on the violins, the standard kind it's of wonderful. instruments, isn't it's it? It's wonderful. You, can, you it get the color of the country. Absolutely. And, and the and flavor of the And yet of it's so, culture, right? so utterly contemporary. Yep. Um, marvelous. But what I would like to make one mention before we get, go on with Nasimi here. We are... Uh, performing oh yeah we next are. week oh uh, yeah. Ruslan and I uh, with the San Bernardino Symphony yep. at uh, the California Theater in the famous San Bernardino guys right and yeah. uh, that's on May 28th at 7 30 p.m. Ruslan will be playing the Tchaikovsky Rococo variations and the David Popper Hungarian Rhapsody and the Hungarian Rhapsody probably probably will be in the in the in the golden jacket right Oh, a golden yeah. jacket. I forgot about that jacket. Uh, yeah. Will will get out the polish, and yeah. uh, you know we'll get that jacket <laughs> brighter than ever. <laughs> and we're also doing Dvorak's Eighth Symphony. So uh, go to the uh, the website for San Bernardino Symphony. Uh, org, I believe. Is that right? Or yes. just Google San, San Bernardino, Bernardino Symphony. Yeah. Org. Or just Google Frank Feta. Or, or Ruslan Birka. Really easy to yeah. find. So yeah. we hope we see you in San Bernardino <coughs> on May 28th. It's a big show, 75 piece orchestra on the that's stage, right. 2000 that's seat right. hall. Beautiful hall. Yeah, beautiful so hall. come. It's truly beautiful. So hopefully yeah, we'll be doing downtown. some Azerbaijani music nice. here in the future. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Wouldn't it be amazing? Because yeah, I, I exactly. right, really, the symphonic stuff is really very exciting. And speaking of symphonic stuff, the famous composer Kara Karayev. Ah, yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, next week, guys, you will hear his symphony, uh, his actually suite, orchestral suite called Don Quixote. And everyone knows who Don Quixote Don is, Quixote, right? Yeah. Don Quixote. Yeah. I mean, uh, Don Quixote. Yeah. Don Quixote, yeah. yeah. And uh, we have a little excerpt for you from actually his different suite called Seven Beauties. If Richard can play for us track number 11. Belly. Uh, yep, that's his ballet. But you guys will hear his Sweet Don Quixote and it's in Titan next week.
We are. Are we on? Yeah. yeah. Oh. Believe it or not. Ah, oh, we have beautiful background music <laughs> of this ballet suite from Seven Beauties. Well, as you know, we're on the air here at LA Talk Live with Nasimi Agaev, who is the Consul General of Azerbaijan. And that's what we just heard was Waltz yes. from the ballet Seven Se Beauties Seven by Beauties, exactly. Karaka Se Rai. Seven Beauties, actually, it's a... It's a emblematic of Azerbaijan's multiculturalism. It's yes. a story of seven beauties from different uh, cultures, countries. Ah, okay. So it's also based on the, on the uh, same name poem by Nizami Ganjavi. Mm -hmm. uh, and by the way, we brought this ballet to San Diego uh, last uh, two years ago. Again, like m over 3,000 people came at the Civic Theater in San Diego and watched this ballet for the first time in the United States. So we try to bring as much culture and music from Azerbaijan to here so that people can have a, a, a bit more knowledge about this country. It's because the art and culture is the one of the best ways to get to know other countries, absolutely, other, absolutely. other people, mm -hmm. and building bridges. Absolutely. That's what we are striving to absolutely. do. Well, Remarkable. we certainly have a charming, a charming consul general who can make his case uh, with his own personal... Uh, Frank, do you want to go to Azerbaijan now? <laughs> I, I do. <laughs> this I is do. the Welcome. moment. I do. And you this know, one the of moment. the things that is drawing me to uh, uh, Azerbaijan, not only this wonderful gentleman, <laughs> and we have mutual friends, interestingly enough, which we exactly. found out this morning, exactly. but this beautiful, beautiful series of buildings, would you tell us about, uh, do you call them the Flame Towers? Flame Towers, yeah, Land of Flame uh, Yeah, yeah. Flame I, towers. I hope that some people can see this. Or just, you know, ju you guys just can Google the word Baku. Yeah, this is That's truly this. emblematic of, of, exactly. of... I've not it's seen anything. I mean, they look like little jewels. They almost look like they're in the breeze, but the, the color exactly. and the size of them and the, and the symmetry... Oh, These are the, the, the uh, tallest tallest towers in the entire region. So they are wonderful, so wonderful. Both wonderful modern buildings. architecture and medieval and architecture. And how, how they contrast... In this the picture, wa waterfront, it's yes. unbelievable. So I think so it's some place to really consider to go. Come to yes, come to Azerbaijan. It's modern, diverse, ancient culture and music. So people will is enjoy it. Is it expensive? It's not that expensive. Uh, we are now uh, developing mm -hmm. tourism. Mm -hmm. We've, we try to attract uh, as many tourists as possible. So yeah, I know that you it's guys. It's, it's worth. Just build the ski resorts as well, right? Two of them. Two, two ski resorts. Yeah, two of them. Picture. Yes. Well, I saw the picture <laughs> somewhere Remarkable. else. I'm not sure if I saw it here. But what uh, what would you want us to get out to the public to take from this wonderful meeting that we've had with you today about the importance of uh, Azerbaijan in the world scene? And also here in the United States, how can we become more familiar with Azerbaijan here yeah. in the United States? Um, so Azerbaijan is a friend of the United States. Uh, we are strategic partners with the United States. It's an important ally there in that important region with an ancient history, culture, music. So a lot to offer mm -hmm. to the world with a multicultural model, multi-faith harmony. And, you know, actually, yes, the, the our consulate here is in Los Angeles. We are, our doors are open. Whenever you want, call us, email us, contact us. We'll be always happy to help uh, in as much as possible. And yes, come to Azerbaijan. That's the, uh, the, the, the biggest message. Come to Azerbaijan and see that with your own eyes. Now, another Without thing I would ask, it. and I think it's important uh, from the standpoint of the music, uh, is it relatively easy to get a hold of Azerbaijani music both in stores, not there aren't That's too many stores. That's a good question, yes. you know, Frank. How That's do you do this? Yes. Yeah. So now you've got uh, a lot of Azerbaijani folk music, classical music mm -hmm. on iTunes. You've got, of course, uh, YouTube is full of mm -hmm. uh, uh, Azerbaijani music examples, samples. So it's um, you, you, it's now much much easier than it used to be, like 20 right. years ago. Right. Yeah. Of course, thanks and to internet. And to bring it closer to home, since you did the uh, the ballet, the Seven Beauties in San Diego and the cloth peddler here in Los Angeles. Are are there visual representations of that that are uh, people exactly. are able to tune into websites where exactly. they can actually see those Yes, on our channel uh, on YouTube, oh, which good. is okay. AZ Consulate LA. Great. Uh, uh, you, you, can, you can see that the uh, portions of those mm -hmm. uh, oper op operetta, Claus good. Peddler, and Seven Beauties. Good. Remarkable. Good. good. Remarkable. Well, well Frank, here we are at the yeah. end of this hour. Thank you, thank you so yeah. much. And, and, and an hour wasn't enough, you. we yeah, feel, yeah. right? I know, there's a lot yeah. to talk about. It's an Way ancient culture, it's a modern culture, it's a culture it's a that is culture. very vibrant, and it's also, more importantly, in my thinking, a culture that we should look to for the harmony that we're all looking for. Exactly. <laughs> That's correct. Yes. So we, we look toward you, Azerbaijan and Nasimi.
Thank and, you for uh, coming. We, we hope you we will much. see you sometimes again. again. And we'll Actually. see you soon again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thank you. you. Thank you. And here we are at the end of our hour. We are the Cool Classics. The I cool think, classics. boy, yeah. is that... Is Frank, are you still Frank? Frankie? I'm still Frank. <laughs> and and I'm, I'm still Ruslan. <laughs> and we are Cool Classics on LA Talk Live. Listen to our broadcast next week, and we'll see you back live in two weeks. At LATalkLive.com. Thank, Thank you, you for listening Thank and you. watching. Thank you for tuning in to L.A. Talk Live and the Talk Live Broadcast Network, original reality radio and crafted for your listening and viewing pleasure. This is L.A. Talk Live, and we are more than just talk. Stay tuned.